Watch Dogs 2, the sequel to the very controversial first game and now the predecessor to the very out there Watch Dogs Legions. In order to create hype for Watch Dogs Legions, Ubisoft gave away Watch Dogs 2 for free at UB Forward on PC. So I figured I'd return to the game and see how it stacks up in 2020 and determine whether it is still worth the buy. I don't really need to introduce myself, do I? I know who you are. Watch Dogs 2's story is vastly different from the first game. The first thing you'll notice while playing the story of this game is it is a lot more light-hearted and doesn't take itself too seriously. A big part of this is the main character Marcus. Personally, I really liked Marcus as a character. He's charismatic and always cracking jokes and has a very likable personality. It's clear taking down Bloom and educating the public on how companies use their private information is a very personal mission for Marcus. However, we aren't exactly sure how personal, which brings me to my only con I have about Marcus. We hardly know anything about him, he's given no backstory, and we have no idea why he became a hacker and why this mission is so important to him. The motivations weren't ever really explained, and the same is with the rest of the DeadSec group. We don't really know much about their past or how they became hackers, which is really something I wish the game explored. Now don't get me wrong, I love the supporting characters in this game. Each character has defining character traits and they each have a contribution to bring to the group. My personal favorite character was Wrench. He provided a lot of comic relief and while most of the time he was making jokes or having fun, there were also a few serious and genuine moments with Wrench that made his character feel two-dimensional. I also found Satara to be a really interesting character, and it's clear she's more of the drive and soul behind the Dead Set group. Again, I wish we got to know more about her and her personal motivations, but overall she's a great supporting character. The main story missions in Watch Dogs 2 were often really fun and had some fantastic variety in the mission structure. Some missions involved hacking the people's homes and messing with them, breaking into a CEO office to steal files, or even hacking into a satellite to spy on Bloom's different facilities. It was all really well done and many of these missions included new and creative ways to hack or fight. I mean there was even a mission where I got to play as a massive killer spider drone. What I also really liked about the story was how it surprisingly actually dived into real world issues and explored the future of allowing companies access to our private information and allowing them to spy on you through cameras cameras and even toys, which is definitely not going to be giving me nightmares. The story's main antagonist is Dushan Nemec. He's in a leadership position at the evil security giant Bloom. It's hard to explain Dushan, really. While he was in the story quite a bit, I really didn't find him very interesting. In fact, he was pretty basic, and there was no real explanation to his motivations or what caused him to go down a dark path. He didn't interact with Marcus or the Dead Sick group that much, and most of his scenes were just him by himself making vague evil plans. It was all really confusing at what exactly he was wanting to do. Maybe it's just me, but I didn't find Dushan very memorable, and there were far more interesting side villains like Lenny. The ending to Watch Dogs 2 I found to be solid. It was nothing crazy or special, and it was a bit predictable, but overall I found the ending satisfying and left me pretty happy with how the game ended. Shots fired. We're in route. Let's talk gameplay. I found Watch Dogs 2's gameplay to be really smooth and well polished. For starters, I thought the parkour looked great, I mean you could do backflips and stuff which I thought looked really cool. The combat was also pretty solid, the shooting is kind of basic and gives me some major GTA vibes, so I wish they tried to do a little more to make it more unique, but that doesn't mean it's bad, it just basic. Stealth was also a little disappointing for me. You have a very limited arsenal when it comes to stealth, and while the melee and taser were fun, I would have liked to see more options. There are only like two suppressed weapons and enemies hear the gunshot most of the time anyway. The detection system is also pretty bad. If an enemy spots you for like a split second, then you take them out before they can even react, they still somehow set off the alarm and everyone knows where you are. It ruined a lot of stealth sequences for me, especially since I played on realistic where it only takes about two seconds seconds to spot you. There's a small handful of gadgets at your disposal like the shot grenade that helped with taking out large groups of enemies at once. I also would have liked to have a manual crouch button instead of that automatic like half crouch when you enter a restricted area. So just a fair warning, don't be expecting an incredibly deep combat or stealth system in the game. Again, it's not bad, it just feels pretty basic. You will also spend a lot of time in vehicles in this game, and you'll be happy to know that the handling is actually pretty good, especially on the motorcycle 
motorcycles, which were by far my favorite vehicle. And while you're driving to your next mission, you'll often get prompted to do a nearby online mission, which can include hacking invasion, armored trucks, or bounty hunter, which are all really fun and spiced up the open world a lot. I thought it was pretty cool how quickly and easily you could get into an online event, and they are pretty quick, so you can get right back into the single player. The offline side missions were also fun and creative enough to make them not feel too repetitive. Plus, putting graffiti on the Golden Gate Bridge was pretty fun. The game also has a fair amount of hacking and parkour puzzles that were pretty simple and fun without being too easy. Definitely a few head scratchers every now and again. I'm not usually a fan of puzzles and video games, but these were pretty fun and simple enough that I could actually understand them fairly quickly. One of the best parts about Watch Dogs 2's gameplay is the hacking abilities. You can hack pretty much anything electronic in this game and messing with civilians by either stealing their money or sending a shock through their phone was pretty fun. You could even call in a hate on them or put an APB on them to get them arrested. I had hours of just messing with people with the hacks. The hacks were also quite useful in stealth as you can send distractions to guards by having their phone vibrate or comms piece malfunction, which allowed for easy melee takedowns. It is clear Watch Dogs 2 really emphasized on being in a hacker's playground and it shows. Speaking of, the amount of upgrades you can make to the kind of hacks you do and even just basic things like faster reloading was impressive. There are a lot of upgrades to be made and most of them had significant impacts on the gameplay that made you feel more powerful as you progressed and the DeadSec fan base grew. I wasn't a huge fan of the later upgrades being locked behind data scattered across the map, but that just gives you even more to do in the world, so it doesn't bother me too much. Watch Dogs 2's gameplay is overall a simple yet smooth and fun experience, and I enjoyed it. Yeah, I noticed. Fly like foot. Let's now talk about the world of Watch Dogs 2. This game takes place in San Francisco and it is pretty spot on. The buildings look and feel authentic and seeing the Golden Gate Bridge in a video game was incredible. It is clear they spent a lot of time doing research on the city and including as much detail as possible. The textures in this game are vibrant and gorgeous with beautiful sunny skies and some fantastic weather effects. Like seriously, the rain in this game looks really good. The city is bustling with cars in the streets and people on the sidewalk and it all feels super lived in like you're actually in San Francisco. Oakland was also in the game and while it's nowhere near the scale of San Francisco, it does a good job of showing the differences between the two cities. I do wish Oakland was more prominent in the story, but then again, this game revolves around Silicon Valley, so. Like I mentioned earlier, I love Watch Dogs 2's system of random online quick events and they fit well into the world and do a great job of making you feel like you're not alone in this big, beautiful world. There's also a handful of stores with clothing, jewelry, and even coffee and car dealerships, which just adds to the immersion and makes you feel like a resident of the area. The customization in this game is also pretty good. There's a lot of variety in clothing and vehicles, and it's more than enough to set aside people who love open world games. Many people call Watch Dogs 2 Ubisoft's version of GTA, and while the world and gameplay mechanics are similar and definitely took inspiration from GTA, I feel there are enough unique features like hacking that allows the game to stand on its own. Now, let's talk performance for you PC players out there. Obviously the graphics in this game are beautiful, and overall the frames I got were pretty good and I noticed little to no frames frame drops. However, I'm not quite sure if it's just me, but I encountered a heavy amount of stuttering and freezing throughout playing the game. It happened a lot in cutscenes and sometimes even happened while I was in the setting screen. I had looked it up and it seems many others had the same issues as me. I mean, sometimes the freezing was as bad as every few seconds, so do be warned. I spent quite a lot of time searching for a fix and found no success. The stutters weren't as bad after a while, but they still happened around every 5-10 to 10 minutes or so. And at Sometimes it was very infuriating. This may be just an issue for some people, but chances are if you're playing on PC, you got the game for free anyways, so it's not gonna make you think you wasted your money or anything, obviously. Federal problem. Welcome to the club, amigo. Yeah, it's what he wanted. Now, should you buy Watch Dogs 2 in 2020? Short answer is yes. The story, world, and gameplay is a very fresh and smooth experience, and it still holds up by today's standards. Now again, if you have it on PC, you likely got it for free. If you're on console, I would definitely wait for a sale, or if you're really eager, I'd say it's likely even worth full price. Not too long ago, the game was on sale for like $10 on Xbox and PlayStation, and at that price, the game is definitely worth the money. This is by no means a perfect game, but there is so much enjoyable content that some of its more obvious flaws aren't even as noticeable. 
That does it for this edition of Should You Buy. If you agree or think differently, please let me know down below in the comments. Please also comment which game you would like to see next for Should You Buy. I'm likely going to be doing polls on my channel to determine which game is next. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please feel free to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. I've done a good amount of games already and have many more on the way. Also, if you're interested in playing co-op for Watch Dogs 2 or any other co-op games, please feel free to join the community discord where we play co-op and discuss videos. Other than that, thank you all so much for watching and have a great day assassins.